I'm out of the water, I come out of the water. This year it was uh, December 25th. And then the boat's out for usually until like the first week of March. Um, obviously it varies. I, I couldn't get it in this year just because my boat was actually plowed into my driveway. She had, but she, had, she doesn't have as many oysters in there. She doesn't do it full time. She is. Don't worry about us right now. <laughs> A lot of what I do this time of year is I'm just going cleaning bags off, but I also in the winter time just to my sight sort of it well it deepens as you go away from the point obviously which it um so it's you know to get keep them out of the ice pack and stuff I like to keep them in the deeper part of the site and to do that I have to double up a lot of bags. I put overstock the bags to get a lot of oysters in them just to maximize the space that I have. Um, so this time of year I'm shrinking them again. Um, yeah, it's not necessarily just, I mean, I sell them when they're at size. So some of them will be at size after a year and a half, and some of them take four years. It's, you never really know what's going to happen. I think, you know, we used to get the strands of oysters that we used to get were, were um, grown for fast growth. And it's not necessarily the case anymore with the disease resistant stuff. And they're not slow, slow growers, but they're, they're slower than the other ones were. Yeah, they'll grow faster. Um, much faster. Yeah, the guys down in like uh, New Orleans. Get an oyster to size of the size year. We can't do that here. I mean, it's impossible with the, you know, the, the warmer the water, the more food's in there. You know, it's deep. Um, I'm sure there's some in here that are like weird shaped or, you know, it's like flat. So I don't know. It means, you know, I leave them in there even if they're weird shaped. Um, at this size, or even when they're this time of year too, I'm going through the bags and anything. I have different size meshes, so some of them just don't shape up right. So I won't even end up selling them. Even if I'm them to people or something. But you want them to be nice and cuppy. So. Them aside. And shape they'll regrow them and they'll reshape themselves. So, um, berries have been in quantities. Um, yeah, I sell them for um, I'm not gonna tell you because then then some one of my one of my distributors that pays more will get upset. So, um, some of 
these will be ready. And that's ready. It can't go by itself, so. <laughs> Buddy of mine um, went to UNH. He actually did his master's with Ray. Um, and he was interested in doing it. He wanted me to do it with him. Um, we thought it would be a good idea because we climbed together and we thought that we could go out here for the mornings and then go climbing all day, which didn't end up being the case. Rock climbing? Yeah. That, that, my job before was as a climbing guide down in New York, but, uh, well, I had other various jobs, but that was one of them. Uh, loans and Yeah, it's meager. It's meager for the first three years. It's not easy to do, but um, you know, it, it makes sense to somebody thinking about doing it. Like, oh yeah, I'll just go and chuck a million oysters. In there. Come back, and, you know, go work my job, and come back in three years, and everything will be okay. It doesn't work like that. I mean, you know, even at, at these at the smaller size, there is more work to do. During the summer months, you know, not not now, but, but um, during the summer months, there's a lot of fallow growth. It gets on the bags and clogs the bags up, especially these smaller four mill bags. And you get sponges on there that'll just close every hole. There is a misconception out there that like the bay is, you know, so dirty and sick that you can't eat them out here. They could be farther. Yeah, you know, I get that all the time. People are like, oh yeah, I don't eat those things raw in the bay. It's the only way to do it. Um, get a paycheck every week. Which doesn't sound too bad at certain times when you're, you know, three years out from making any real money. It's, and now that we have a kid and stuff, it's much more amplified, that feeling. But, um, you know, if you make, if you have a good season, you have a great season. Especially when you're not used to a whole lot. So. Any oysters? <laughs> I don't eat a whole lot of oysters these days. <laughs> I do get tired of eating oysters. Um, I don't, well, for two reasons I don't eat a lot of oysters. One, if I really love them, I think I'd eat too many of them. I'd be eating your money away, but, you know, the other thing is just, I eat a lot of them. I, I do eat them when, they're, when I'm going to sell them, I make sure that they're tasty. You know, it's at least three years before you make any sort of income. And usually longer than that, just because it takes a long time to kind of establish um, the farm. So it's around long enough, really. To... Those are the babies. So basically, what I do is it's still a lot, of... and it's all introduced. You know, it's not—they're not natural diseases to this area, anyway. Um, you know, we've had oysters, like various ways. I mean, you know, if somebody brings oysters into a farm or something like that, that we have to have everything tested. Um, all the oysters that we bring in have to be tested for those diseases and, um, you know, proven that they don't carry MSX or Dermo. This year will be the year of milestones, I'm pretty sure, actually. The, uh, everything seems to be doing really well, so. Um, I'll do it as long as I can make money at it. As long as the bay doesn't warm up to the point where. Watch out, look. 
where it's not conducive to growing oysters anymore. You know, if, it has, if that's the reality, that's what you got to do. The last time that, that came up, the Republican. And I'd get people in the farm all the time. And, 